Thank you very much, Ananda. It's really a, a pleasure for me to, to be here on this uh, summer course. And uh, I'll talk to you about the importance of operational oceanography at the service of the ports. Uh, my presentation uh, will have uh, the following index. Uh, I will start explaining why operational oceanography is important for the ports. I will be quite sat satisfied if, as a result of my talk, you got a good idea about that. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's the most important part. The rest of the talk is basically an example the way we do operational oceanography at Puerto del Estado in order to solve that need. So, I will talk in each, uh, first about the networks, the measuring networks we are using to, to uh, monitor the environment. Then I will talk about forecasts at the regional scale. First of all, we need to, to solve uh, the regional scale in order to have a solution to later downscale to the ports. Then I will talk about how we compile the information of these two legs into the climate studies, into the, I will say, climate services, uh, as uh, my pre the previous speaker uh, was talking about, climate services. Then I will talk about how we distribute this information to the harbors and to the rest of the society. Finally, I will speak about what we do specifically for the ports, how we downscale this information in order to serve the needs of the ports and to give the solutions that they require for the daily operations. And I will drive some conclusions. So starting, why the ports need operational oceanography and what is Puertos del Estado? I came, I work for Puertos del Estado, Spanish holding of harbors. And first of all, uh, people is maybe not aware of how important the ports are for the economy of a country, especially, especially for Spain, which is almost an island. 85% of the imports and 65% of the sports are going via ports. So those are critical points for the national economy. Therefore, uh, having uh, those ports properly managed and uh, uh, having the ports with the right tools to be uh, safe, to have a safe operation, it's critical. Where I work, the state-owned uh, Spanish port system is in charge of the coordination and efficiency of the uh, government of the ports. So we are doing a role of a coordination of the port system, and it includes 46 ports of general interest, let's say the largest ports of, uh, at Spain. The big ports of Spain are uh, embedded into this uh, system. So why we need operational oceanography at the ports? I think that if you, are, if you want to sleep after this slide, you can do it, but this is, this is the one where, where, you can, where you can really get some uh, useful information, I think, for the future. So why we need this? We need this information in all lives, in all, in all, in all the uh, life phases of the port. We need during the design, during the construction, and during the exploitation. During the design phase, the meta ocean information is critical. It's going to tell us if the port is viable, what is the budget to construct a port? It's not the same to construct something in the Cantabric Sea than to construct something in the Mediterranean Sea. And uh, how I'm going to, to, to build this port? Can I build it all year long? Can I only build during summertime? And also will define, for example, if the harbor will be operational all the time, or I could expect the harbor to be operational only 50% of the time, or 60 or 70% of the time. That has an economic impact. Then. What is important for that? The, clim the climatology, basically, that I am obtaining from measurements and from models. I have to define the climate where the harbor is going to be constructed. In this sense, the CMEMS, you've been talking, you've been hearing about CMEMS all these days, I guess. CMEMS reanalysis and multi year in situ products are very, becoming more and more important for this task. Then, during the construction phase, we have the port being constructed here, we have here people going up and down. And we have to be uh, ready to put these people out of the risk if there is a storm coming. And uh, unfortunately, this happens. And uh, there has been uh, cases where uh, we have had fatal accidents of people being washed away by waves 
during the construction. So it's very important to have real-time alert system and short-term forecast system. In this sense, again, CMMS in situ and MFC forecast system are becoming more and more important. Finally, once the harbor is done, is built, we need it during the exploitation phase to operations, to uh, advance when the port is going to be closed. For example, it's, it's re relatively uh, frequent that the port needs to be closed due to high seas, due to steam weather conditions. And it's very important to be able to know that in advance. Piloting operations need uh, this kind of information in order to put ships safely into the harbor, Env environmental management, water quality, uh, oil spill pollution, etc., etc. In this uh, case, the important uh, systems are the real-time alert systems, so the measurements, measurements are very important in all phases, and finally, the forecast, the short-term forecast is very important to know what is going to happen on the in the next three, four, five days in order to be able to uh, planify correctly. So, for solving all these problems, operational oceanography comes to rescue. And what we have in Puerto del Estado is the classical scheme that is more or less repeated one time and another all along uh, the planet in the centers that are working for, uh, in operational oceanography. We have the real-time networks, the forecast systems, the climate information, which is basically the compilation of these two systems. We have data coming from here, coming from here, that goes into the climate services, let's call it like that. And finally, equally important is how we are able to distribute this information. So I will explain how we work with these systems at Puertos del Estado. Also very important is the aspect or the, or the issue of the scales. The port needs information from the regional scale. We've been working in this for decades in the classic Puertos del Estado system, I call it like that. That means what is uh, happening uh, at, the, at the Atlantic Sea, at the, at the Atlantic Ocean, at the Mediterranean Sea. But sometimes this information is not sufficient. The harbor needs much, much higher resolution. For example, needs a resolution able to solve what is happening inside the harbor. I'm talking about meters resolution. Therefore, we need downscale this information, and we have done that through this so-called Samoa project that I will talk later about. So here we have on the, on the regional scale the networks, the CMEMS data, and the Puerto del Estado models. Then for the high resolution system, we have nested models for waves, for circulation. And finally, what this, this is producing is data, and what the port needs is information. So we need added value tools, and we have developed software which we call CMA that is able to provide alerts, to provide uh, reports to, to, to do oil spill forecasts for the ports. So this final layer is equally important for the port users that are the pilots, people in charge of uh, uh, managing environmental issues, operations, construction, etc., etc. So, starting for the first point, which are the oceanographic networks, uh, I will briefly explain the networks that we are having, at, uh, that we are uh, managing at Puertos del Estado, and the ones that are providing this historical information and this real-time information that I, I explained already the use that it has. The first one is the, I have to start with the, what we call the deep water buoy network. We have 15 of these buoys, those are large buoys, and I'm talking about one ton or less, six meters from here to below the water. And uh, we call it deep water buoy network because they are anchored, they are placed at depths larger than 400 meters. Why we are doing that? Because we want to measure waves that are not affected by bathymetry. It's very important for uh, the ports, the measurement of the waves. In fact, it's, if you have to, to choose a variable which is vital for the ports, probably it will be winds and waves. Wind and waves. So the buoys are deep and not affected by bathymetry. So they represent large uh, portions of coast. Uh, and you can, uh, the measurements of these buoys can be used to represent all the Spanish coast. With a number, limited number of buoys, you can have an alert system and a monitoring system that is really giving service to all Spanish coast. They are multi-parameter, 
you are measuring waves, currents, uh, sea surface temperature, winds, atmospheric pressure. They are a, a platform able to measure many variables. Transmitting in real time by satellite because they are not uh, near to the coast. And the important thing is that now we have almost 20 years of data of this network. Uh, and I think this is quite unique in the sense that we have, for example, some very long time series of currents, which is um, very strange to have such long time series of currents. And of course, the rest of the parameters like waves and in this case, CCFS temperature along the last decade, for example. Of course, with some gaps due to accidents, due to maintenance of the buoys, etc. This is how difficult uh, the life of the buoy is. Mm? You see, when the buoy is recovered from the water, how it looks like only after two or three months, the buoy looks like that. And this is a current meter. So you can imagine that the measurement is not very accurate <laughs> after uh, having all these barnacles uh, around. In spite of that, we do the regular maintenance and we are maintaining it properly, so we are able to get this uh, long time series. The second network I want to talk to you is the coastal buoys. Those, those are smaller buoys, more close to the harbor entrance, and are, let's say, the uh, buoy of the harbor. Are more linked to daily operation. They are just in shallow water, and they are uh, just measuring the actional waves and sea surface temperature. Two of, the, two of them are multi-parametric as the other ones, but again, very close to the, to the harbor. Since they are close to, to land, we can connect by radio. And those are the uh, longest time series that we have. Data start to be available in the 80s. Another very important network is the tide gauge uh, network. We have, uh, at this moment, 39 of these stations. Those are of uh, radar type. Uh, those were updated four or five years ago to this kind of measurement. So now we, they are measuring at two hertz. That means that we are able to monitor all the uh, different uh, phenomena that are uh, important for sea level, from waves to climate change, all, all the different risks and all the different phenomena. It's uh, connected uh, through internet in real time, and we are uh, updating the information every, uh, well, basically in real time, as you can see here. Time series of this network started in 92. And as I was mentioning, since the network is able to measure at two hertz, we are able to control agitation. This is a very important variable for the port. Some of the ports are more concerned about agitation than about problems, uh, classical problems of sea level, like uh, tides or storm surge. It serves also for search, sages and tsunamis, storm surge, and if you get old enough, then what you're measuring is uh, also useful for climate studies, which is starting to be the case because we started with this network in 92. Also, it's important that uh, we are uh, introducing the data of this network in the uh, tsunami warning system that is now operational in, in Spain. You can see here how it's, this, this slide comes from the Geographic Institute of Spain, which is the responsible of the tsunami warning system. And you can see how they have implemented the algorithm for the uh, tsunami uh, alert. It, it's triggered by the seismic alert. But here is the tide gauge data. And we are sending in real time the tide gauge data to, the, to this institution. So they can put the tide gauge data. And basically, it serves, it is used to confirm the existence of the, of the tsunami, to give a confirmation of uh, what they are measuring. Another network is the HF radar network, high-frequency radar network. Probably you, you've been uh, hearing about uh, this kind of technology on, the, on previous days on during the course. What this network is capable of doing is uh, measuring 2D currents. We have several uh, installations, several systems around the uh, Iberian Peninsula. And uh, one of very interesting is the, is the one at the, at the Straits of Gibraltar, where we are uh, measuring very high speeds associated to the, to the jet entering into the uh, Mediterranean Sea. 
A part of uh, c real-time uh, current maps, the system is able to uh, provide wave uh, data. And as I mentioned, we have a total of four systems, some of them in close collaboration uh, with other institutions. For example, this system here, two of the antennas are Puerto del Estado and other two are from the uh, Galicia government. And here, the system is sharing antennas between Puerto del Estado and the Geographic Office of Portugal. So it's also a nice opportunity to do interinstitutional uh, collaboration. So those are the monitoring systems that are providing the real-time data that is needed for the daily operations of the port. All this data, there's people on the port that the first thing that they do when they arrive after taking a coffee, of course, after the morning coffee, they look into the data of this system and check out uh, what is the conditions for the daily operation. For example, pilots, for example, uh, let me let me think uh, some examples. Almeria Harbor, for example, they have a area where they uh, have plaster, big piles of, of plaster, and they depend on the sea state to do the operations. If the sea state is rough, they have to move everything out of this area. Thanks to this system, thanks to real-time systems, they are able to, to manage this, uh, this area where they store the plaster, and they are uh, doing a business per year of 1 million euros per year, thanks to the information provided to these systems. So, forecasting at the regional scale, uh, Puerto del Estado has been traditionally active in this. When I mention regional scale, I mean this scale, Mediterranean Sea, Atlantic. Puerto del Estado has been uh, traditionally active in this uh, field. We started with the wave modeling in 95, sea level modeling in 98, and now the circulation model is done in collaboration with other institutions such as Mercator and via Siemens. I will focus on this CMEMS activity because it's the most uh, recent and the most relevant one that we are uh, doing. Uh, we have all these uh, products available. We have the forecast and the reanalysis. In the case of the circulation, we are doing that with the NEMO model. In the case of the biogeochemical, we are doing that with the pistons model. And in the case of the waves, we are doing it with the WAM model. For example, the uh, bio and the waves are as recent as this year. They, are, they started, they entered into operation this year, and you can see here some outputs of the uh, different models that are producing this solution for the regional scales, which are quite useful for the ports, but as you will see later, you need sometimes to downscale to inside the ports. I'll show you some animation. On the circulation model, uh, this model, as I mentioned, is uh, being uh, developed in collaboration with Mercator Ocean. It's uh, two kilometers, uh, so it's a huge monster. Uh, 75 layers in the vertical. You can see uh, here the currents from Ireland to the Canary Islands. Uh, we execute this thing once per day in uh, Galicia Supercomputer Center. We, we use 1,000 CPUs every day to uh, do a five days forecast of this system. This is the sea surface temperature. You can see how complex the, the mesoscale uh, structures are, and this is what really makes difficult to forecast ocean circulation. Meteorologists are a little bit more lucky than us because the structures in the atmosphere are much, much larger and they have more data for data simulation. So they, they have it a little bit easier than us. This is the upwelling, for example, in the Portugal and Galician region. You can see this is why going to take a bath here is so cold. And another example with the uh, jet uh, entering into the uh, Mediterranean seas and forming the Albor and Gyre. Uh, 
equally important, a part of running the model is knowing what we're doing with the model and be sure that your model is accurate or is uh, performing properly as you expected. So we have developed what we call North Atlantic Regional Validation Tool, NARVAL. And with NARVAL tool, we are using today all the data that we have available. There is no any single data set now available that we are not using both in real time and in delay mode to validate our system. That includes gliders, that includes uh, drifters, includes uh, HF radar, satellite data. You see here some examples of how we are validating on a daily basis uh, the sea surface temperature on the uh, EB system with respect to the satellite. This is the bias, the root mean square error. And similar thing for the HF radar that we use operationally to validate uh, the system. Sorry. With information of the, uh, both the in-situ system and the uh, forecasting and modeling systems, we compile all this to into the climate services or in climate studies. We have developed tools into the Puertos del Estado webpage. You can visit this web, uh, web page here, portos.portos.es. And in those uh, systems, you can get information historical information of the high cast, of the uh, uh, measurements, you can plot time series, you, can, uh, ha you have interactive tools to get the information that you need in the shape that you need, and you have many, many reports. So our idea here is to provide the information as digested, as processed as possible, because we have found, found out that many times the users, what they need is, no, they don't need the data, they need information already processed. Most of the users need the information already processed because most of the users don't have really the knowledge to, to process this information in the proper way. So we have a lot of uh, processing uh, capabilities into this system. Apart of that, there, there are other users such as scientists or engineers that need the information in the, raw day, in the raw way in order to do their own processes. We have around 400 of these requests of data per year. So th this means that uh, these both models and uh, in situ observation that I have been explaining to you are a major source of information for science at uh, Spain and are a major source of information for design of harbor uh, and other infrastructure. For example, offshore uh, energy uh, complex are designed with this data. For example, uh, aquaculture is very important, this, this climatic information. So how we distribute this information? We have the web page. I already mentioned that, portus.portus.es. I invite you to, to have a look into it. Uh, the information is, I'm not going into it because it takes a lot of time, but it's very well structured. And basically, all the information that I have been talking about up to now is on this web page and you can download it for free there. It's updated in real time, and we have around 8,000 users every day visiting uh, this system. Also, uh, it's not very friendly if you are having a mobile device, so we developed a, a, a mobile application with we, which we call IMAR. You can download it for, uh, for free, both for uh, Apple system and Android systems. So if you feel, feel, feel curious, find this one on the Apple Store, on the, on the Play Store, and have a look into, into it. Finally, as I mentioned, it, uh, those regional uh, forecasts are very useful for the boards. For example, the wave forecast at the regional scale is already very useful for the boards because they, you can get a very good idea of what is approaching to your port in with several days of advance, but sometimes you need high resolution. For example, if you want to do, if you have an oil spill inside your port, it's no use of the SIM. The SIM system is, is almost useless because you need a resolution of meters inside your harbor, and the SIM system have a resolution of two kilometers, as I mentioned it. For example, if you have an inner area of your harbor 
that is affected by agitation due to the waves, to have a modeling system at the regional scale is of limited use because you really need to know what is going on inside your harbor. So we need to downscale all these solutions to inside the harbor. For that, we developed the Samoa project, and in this project, we have a now 66 coastal models that are being executed daily for solving these harbor needs. Those models are high-resolution atmospheric models. We have 10 of those solving atmospheric at one kilometer resolution. The standard uh, Spanish IMET uh, atmospheric resolution today is five kilometers. So it means that we have 25 more points than the standard model. Then we have 17 systems of high-resolution waves. We go down to three, four, five meters inside the harbor in two, nest, in, two, in two steps. First, we have a swam model, and then we have a mile slope model. We are able, therefore, to solve uh, the waves, as you can see here. This is the Almeria Harbor, for example. And then finally, we have 11 high-resolution circulation systems. We go down to 50 meter resolution on those ones. You can see, for example, this is the solution for the, for the Bilbao Harbor. A little bit about the system. This is the uh, high-resolution atmospheric system. This is the original five-kilometer resolution system from uh, IMED, and this is our one-kilometer resolution system. And the improvement is clear both in RMS and BIAS, as expected. You can see here the clear difference on the solution when you improve, obviously, the, uh, the resolution in this area, which is uh, of very high topographic importance. Waves, you can see here the uh, wave forecast, for example, at the Barcelona Harbor, how the peers are doing what, what they are expected to do, stopping the waves. But you have diffraction, you have reflection, you have all sorts of uh, phenomena affecting the waves, and some, you have some penetration of the waves inside the harbor that can be extremely important for the activities being carried out inside the harbor. So they really need this kind of resolution and this kind of forecast. <coughs> Look at, this is Gijón Harbor in the north of Spain. Look at the grid. We have a three-meter grid on this harbor. It's massive. And this is how the bathymetry looks like. I think this is around 10 kilometers from this point to this point at three-meter resolution. So it's truly massive. And we are able to do things now thanks to new numerical techniques and thanks to, to uh, computers uh, that we could not dream uh, a few years ago. Those are the circulation systems that we have downscale into the, into the harbors. This is the first step, the coastal scale. I mentioned it to you that there are first a coastal scale, a, a scale and then nested into that a, a port scale system. Mm? Those are the coastal systems that we have a, in different areas a, of Spain. And another animation of one of these coastal systems shows you a a beautiful phenomena, which is the generation of the internal waves on the Straits of Gibraltar. As you know, you have a uh, tidal uh, flow. Tidal, uh, uh, there's a piling of the water when the water wants to go out, but the tides does not allow it. When the tide changes the sense, this water is released. You have an hydraulic jump, and it uh, creates the internal waves that uh, are well known in the area. The exciting thing about this plot is that it is done, you can see here, uh, the, the mark of this as it is well known on the satellite data. The exciting thing of that animation is that it is done based on the data of the model that is operational. We are, doing, we are solving this phenomena now on a daily basis with this, with this model. Again, it was important to do the validation on the regional scale. Now it's important to do the validation on the coastal and local scale. Imp operations are important. All the systems are integrated in a 24-7 system. And uh, that's not that important. Validation through the NARVAL tool. We are using the same NARVAL tool to validate with all what we have available. Again, HA radar. Uh, buoys, moored buoys, all tight gauges, all what we have available is being used into the NARVAL tool. 
and it's quite useful. Sometimes we made mistakes. We, we, we develop, for example, a new version of the, of the nested model. We commit, we have a mistake. We put wrong our boundary conditions. We are unable to detect that. If you look at first sight, everything is fine. But after one or two weeks, by looking into this tool, you start to detect that, for example, sea surface temperature is slowly drifting, and you start to see that there's something wrong on your system. And this is the way we have detected uh, several times things like that now. And this is the importance of this kind of systems. If you don't have this kind of system, of real-time uh, validation system, then you will finally realize of the error. But you will finalize of the, realize of the error maybe six months later when your system is com a complete disaster. A part of being able to model at this scale, we need to show the information to the ports at this scale. So we have developed, I already mentioned that, the CMA. I will show you briefly here. This is, for example, how it, oops, not here. I can see it, but you cannot see it. I don't know why. I don't know how to solve it. Sorry about that. OK. Furthermore, it's blocked now. <laughs> Okay, back to life. Okay, sorry, I, I'm not able to show you that, but basically what you can see is this kind of solutions uh, of very high resolution solution animated and available in the interface that the ports do have for their own use. It's a tool that is not open, it's not free. You need a password to enter into that because it's for the service of the port. This tool uh, is able to, um, for example, uh, send alerts. You can configure uh, alerts if you are uh, doing an operation inside the harbor and you want to be uh, alerted if the wave height or maybe a combination of the wave height and the wind or a strange combination of wave height, wind and currents is very uh, modular. You can create the alert that you want, program it into the system very easily and then every day you receive into your email or via SMS if you have this alert triggered or not. It's fully customized at the selection point, the combination of alert criteria and selection of thresholds. Also, and this is, I think, it's the best seller of the system, you can configure your own reports and you can receive those reports on a daily basis on your, on your email. This is very, very useful for the ports. This is how the interface looks like for the oil spill, uh, which is integrated into the system. So if they have an oil spill and they have the circulation and the high resolution wind, they can run this oil spill system and uh, do a forecast of where the, go the oil is going. And it's very important for them in order to place properly the barriers to fight against marine pollution. So as conclusions for my talk, the monitoring and forecasting of the sea environment is simply a need. In red, the word need for harbor authorities and society, obviously. But I'm talking mainly of harbor authorities. The investment in operational oceanography produces an important and large economic return. It's also very beneficial from the economic point of view. And it's very important for safety. It really saves uh, lives, this kind of systems. And we have uh, good examples of people not using this kind of system, having problems that we are not having because we have this kind of systems. Society can reach this knowledge thanks to, thanks to operational oceanography, combining properly in situ measurements, numerical modeling, and outreach activities. Mm -hmm. And of course, on top of that, science, R&D and science. And this is basically what we are doing, our team at Puertos del Estado, and also our colleagues working on the Samoa systems that are helping us, SOFIP, SAMPA, uh, yeah, all the institutions that are hel helping us to develop uh, this system, and of course, the very important contribution from Siemens. 
That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Enrique. Thank you for your uh, talk. So, um, in your first slide, that you have mentioned that you have uh, models uh, during the design phase, and I wonder that now you have the ports. So, do you have still uh, do you still have a problem with the hydrodynamics? Some, uh, for example, sediment transport. Uh, beach erosions or sandbars in your harbor. Yeah, this is this is one of the of the problems that that uh, we have in some harbors, and uh, indeed we need uh, knowing the currents. We need uh, the waves. For example, in the Mediterranean Sea, sediment is basically a transport of sediment is uh, very much dri uh, dri driven by wave, yes. and uh, it's one of uh, the fields where a good uh, climatic knowledge is important to, to, to determine that. Yes. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah. question? This time it's question. So can you please elaborate on the status of oil spill monitoring in your ports and areas and how the operational models are suited for this purpose? Thank you. Well, uh, the um, competence, the legal competence for fighting against uh, oil spill inside the harbors correspond to the port authorities. So they should uh, be able to do a good job in this sense. Obviously, there are port authorities that are more advanced technologically than others, and some of them are doing are better prepared than others. And this, this is, let's say, a culture that is uh, being installed slowly in the, in, the, in the port authorities. Certainly, this kind of system are a giant leap, let's say, in, in this aspect, because now they are able to forecast, to, to have an estimation of where the oil is going and they can use the uh, barriers that they have for protecting areas and to limit the oil spill. But I'm talking about inside the harbor, where the harbor have the responsibility. Outside the harbor, it's SASEMAR, Salvamento Marítimo, another institution which has the responsibility. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, is, it, is it possible to use this kind of information to increase efficiency in the port? It is absolutely, uh, I would say, necessary. I'll give you examples. Uh, we did uh, surveys in the harbors asking for what kind of problems do they have. And uh, we knew that they have a lot of problems with waves, for example, but we were surprised, for example, on how important extreme winds are for them. Uh, they need wind forecasts and uh, wind, maximum wind speed in order to uh, be able to operate the cranes inside the harbors. So if they have a, a forecast of a wind, a stream, a winds very high, they simply ca cancel the operation that they are going to, to do. So all the way the harbor is managed internally very much could depend if the weather is uh, bad uh, on the, on the metal ocean condition. Basically, a port can, can even close, can close if, yeah. the, if, the, if the waves are too high. They, they close every year, they close uh, sometimes. But I mean, uh, most of the, the ports, they use tide, tidy tables. But we can, with the uh, numerical model, we can have uh, tides included with med meteorological tide. You know, like you can have well, uh, uh, 10 centimeters more than... In Spain, in Spain I have to say that the, the Spanish port system are using our sea level forecast. True. Um, I would not say lots all of them, because as I mentioned, it, it very much depends, to be honest, on, on, the, on the degree of advance in the, in, the, in the port. There are ports with uh, more advanced than others. But uh -huh. for example, Barcelona Harbor, since many, many years ago, they are using our sea level forecast, which includes the residual, the, the effect of the wind and atmospheric pressure, to uh, their operations. Like they can put more cargo into the ship? Oh, yes. Uh, one, for example, in the Sevilla Harbor, one centimeter more 
means one container more into the ship, which is very important. It's a lot of money. Yes. Um, is it possible to a private company to sell some this kind of information to a, a private terminal? Or is it only the government? Okay. You no, know, you can go there, but you are entering into competence with us. <laughs> <laughs> Of okay. course, of course, you can go there. Of course, and uh, m they will they will send you to us, and then we can collaborate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, after uh, watching the performance of these models, uh, what would you say? Uh, which features uh, are you happy with? Completely? And which of them need uh, work? Thank you. I'm not uh, providing a surprising uh, uh, answer on that one. Uh, waves are working very well. Winds are working reasonably well. And circulation is working better in areas that are dominated by tides and in areas that are not dominated by tides or where the baroclinic structure is uh, more important. The degree of uncertainty is large due to these, all these studies and all these things that you've been... Uh, so no surprise on that reply, I guess. <laughs> Next question. Okay, uh, thank you for your presentation. And uh, so many uh, observations and so many work, so many systems, I, I think a lot of work that is amazing to me. So I want for... Uh, a non academy question and just a general question about, I want to know how many people uh, uh, are working for this, all of these uh, systems, uh, all of these observations. How many people, such as how many people are working for the observation and the data simulation and the modeling and the some dissemination? So I... Well, it, this, is, this, is, this is really a difficult uh, question to answer because uh, our team at Puerto del Estado is very limited, but we are not working alone into this. All these institutions uh, have collaborated with us, and uh, at the end, for example, uh, for just, just to give you an example, most of the circulation models are being developed, uh, uh, the bathymetry calculation, the, the boundary condition, everything is being uh, cal uh, calculated by a team here in the Laboratorio de Ingeniería Marítima at Barcelona, and then they provide us the setup of the model and we put that into operation. If you start adding all the systems, all the people involved in this, into the system, I don't know, it will be around 30, 40 people easily. Okay, thank you very much, Enrique. I want to say something which I think is, can be useful for you all, the students uh, here today. Um, and basically, it is that uh, what Enrique, uh, Enrique is a good friend, as some of the others, so I'm biased, uh, I recognize. But the important thing you have to know is that um, who remembers, Enrique has been working on this for 20, 30 years, doesn't matter, a lot of time, so he has experience. Now I'm going to ask you one question, like uh, Martin Wiesberg was doing this morning, questions to you. Who remembers what happened in Spain in November 2002? Probably nobody. <laughs> okay, maybe you. <laughs> you. One guy. Okay. Okay. okay, there was a, a huge oil spill, okay, the prestige oil spill, okay, uh, of Galicia. You can look on the web, um, etc. Okay. And th at that time, what I can tell you is that there was n almost nothing of what Enrique is showing right now. Okay? So, in 2002, almost nothing of what he has shown existed. So, it has taken some years, but in 2002, actually, what I did is I took the phone and called to Enrique's supervisor at that time um, to start running an operational system uh, on the phone almost, from Mallorca and Madrid, etc. So it's taken 15 years, but right now I think, uh, I think you have to be really proud, Enrique. You have one of the systems that goes from the open ocean to the coast and with specific applications to the harbors. So it can be done. So try to take example of this kind of uh, people and uh, uh, as we have said uh, other times uh, in these days, uh, networking. Any question? Anything? Now you know. 
He has do it. Thank you, Joaquin. Okay.